What's up everyone, this is Etel and how are you guys doing? So for today's video I want to do something a little bit different. Um, I decided to try this new format where I just kind of throw tips your way. I know we are all in a rush in these crazy lives that we live and we're trying to do a lot of stuff in one day. So I want you to get the most value in the shortest possible amount of time. So today specifically we're talking about 808s and within a few minutes I'm going to give you four tips that are going to help you take them to the next level for sure. These might be things that you haven't thought about um, or if at least one of them you haven't thought about and you learned something new then my job is done. All right, trying to keep this one short. Let's get into it. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Let's get right into it. So the very first tip is how to tune your 808 properly and very quickly in Ableton. So what you want to do is pull up an 808 sound Got this one loaded up. This is from my own sample pack that is still unreleased, but I'm working on it. So all the sounds you're going to hear are going to be from my sample pack. Now, what you want to do is go into your audio effects and pull up tuner. And it's going to pull up this like very simple, clean guitar style tuner. Now, when you press a note, it's going to tell you if it's out of tune or if it's on tune. Right now, this 808 is pretty spot on on the E because um, I made it. So, you know, but depending on the sound that you pick, you might have to adjust it. So if you want to adjust it, you go on controls, you go on detune, and you detune it by however many cents of a semitone that is out. This way you're sure that it's always in tune and you're sure it matches everything else. Now the second tip that I have for you today is something that I don't see a lot of people doing, but I think it's actually quite important and I like doing it a lot. It makes quite a big difference. Now we all sidechain our 808s to our kick drum, or a lot of us do, right? We put the sidechain on the 808 so that every time the kick drum comes in, the 808 kind of like bumps down. So the way it is right now, uh, I just adjusted the ratio and the threshold so it does sidechain with the kick drum a little bit and it sounds like this. But with this quick tip, it's gonna get much, much better. So what we wanna do is adjust the release of the side chain and put it on the perfect number. We want it to exactly match our kick drum so that when the kick drum is over, like when the actual sound of the kick drum is over, the side chain comes right back up so that we don't, don't do it too long or too short and we get a really, really clean side chain. So this is how we do it. We get the kick sound, which we have right here. Uh, right now it's got a little bit of a tail, so I'm gonna cut it back to right where the sound ends. There we go. Now we have our little sound. We double click it right here where it says end, start and end. It tells you how long it is. This kick drum right now, it's 104 milliseconds. So 104, I'm gonna go back to my 808. I'm gonna go into compressor settings and right here on the release button, I'm gonna put 104. Now, every time the kick drum hits, the 808 is gonna lower itself for 104 milliseconds, which is the exact length of the kick drum sound. So they're gonna be perfectly lined up. And as soon as the kick drum is over, the 808 is gonna come right back up and they're gonna be perfectly in time and they're gonna work really well with each other. This is definitely gonna clean up your side chain and your proportions between your kick drum and your 808. On to the next one. This next tip is something that has to do a little bit more with like composition and arrangement rather than just like sound and mixing. But I think it's super important for 808s. I see a lot of people approaching 808s very different than the way they approach melodies. Like they just see it as like kind of like the bass that just kind of keeps the sound going uh, or maybe follows the kick drum. Uh, and that's about it. But I think there's a lot more to be done with 808s. And I really, really like producers that develop their 808s like they were melodies. So when you have a melody, you start like creating some sort of tension, right? You build the tension and at the end of the melody, you tend to resolve it back into the beginning. So you have this cycle of tension release, tension release. So usually you start with like fewer notes um, and then it kind of intensifies towards the end and then it starts back up at the beginning. I'm going to try to give you an example. So I have a super simple drum loop here. No kick drum because I, I don't know what that's going to do yet. I just have hi-hat and snare or clap. Right? Super simple. So let's try to build an 808 part that kind of moves, uh, but without being overbearing. So we don't want it to be overbearing, complicated, and just all over the place, but we want it to kind of sort of build. So I'm going to start with fewer, longer notes, and then eventually it's going to get shorter and like a little bit crazier towards the end. Let's put it down. Right? That's pretty simple, but it kind of works for the purpose of what I'm doing. All right, so all I did to it was adjusting the glides and the length of the notes, and I added a kick drum to it. But as you can see, and you're going to hear it right now, it starts with like very few notes, kind of like spaced out between them, and then it keeps growing, and at the end, it actually does kind of like a fill with like glides and stuff 
Um, this way it kind of builds up and then it starts back over. So if you pay attention to it, you're going to hear tension creating throughout the 808 part, throughout the 8 bar loop or 4 bar loop actually. And then you're going to hear a resolve when it starts back up. Let's play it. And it resolved right there. Right, you see what I'm saying? So let's get to the last tip of this video, which is something that I'm just gonna tell you, you don't have to see it on the screen necessarily. Um, this tip is build your library in a smart way that helps you speed up your workflow with 808s and kick drums. So really start learning the sounds in your library and start matching up 808 and kicks that you know work well together, you know, by trial and error or just by getting used to it. Um, this way, you know, when you when you decide to use a certain kick drum or when you decide to use a certain 808, whichever one you start with, you already know what to pair it with. Um, with the other element because you already tried a bunch of combinations. So for example, I know for myself, like when I, this, this kick and, and, and 808 combination you just heard, I use it all the time because when I need that 808 to be on that track because it sounds good, I already know that that kick drum is going to be perfect for it. It's going to cut through, it's going to hit right, and I don't have to waste any time looking for a different kick drum uh, unless I'm looking for something like really specific. So by building these like pairs, these like matches between 808 and kicks, you'll be able to speed up your workflow a ton because you can just pick one, put it in, and put the pair in, and you're already good to go. And you already know it's going to sound good because you already used it a million times. All right, that was the last tip for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and hope you got some value from this. Um, if you like this format of just like tips really fast, just like thrown at you, one, two, three, uh, let me know and I'll make sure to do more of these. They're really fun. Before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Uh, I post video once or twice a week and I really appreciate all the support I'm getting. Uh, the channel is starting to grow and I'm excited to see where I can take it. So let's get it. Also, if you want to hit me up privately, if you want to just say hi, if you have a question, if you want to, you know, leave a comment privately, whatever you want to tell me, uh, Instagram is the pl best place to do it. I'll put it right here. Just send me a DM on there. And as soon as I can, I will respond. I try to respond to everybody. So I'll get to it. All right. I guess this is it for today. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, be positive and positive things will happen.